Well, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Who are our shepherds? Who have been shepherds for us in our lives? Naturally, we probably think of our parents. Priests are certainly shepherds as well. We might think of teachers that we've had in school, other role models, good sources of influence for us in our lives. All of them are, have been shepherds for us in different ways at different times. I myself am very grateful for a particular shepherd in my life, Father Mark Garrow, who is shown here on the right in this photo. Father Mark was my novice master when I joined the Marians. He was the one who instructed me about what it meant to be a Marian and a priest. And he was a really great example, very loving and very self-sacrificial. He died at an early age, the age of only 52, which is kind of shocking to me because that's how old I am now. But at 52, he died from tongue cancer. And through all the surgeries and the sufferings that he went through, he was constantly offering up all of his sufferings for the young men in formation, uh, the seminarians and novices. He was a truly a saintly man, and he was a good model for me. Just as an aside, here in this picture, we also see some other familiar faces. Some of you may know Father Michael Gately. He's the one on the left. Then next to him is now Father Jason Lewis, who's over at uh, St. Mary's in Plano. And then Father Andy Davey, also who was at St. Mary's and was here, I think, for a time too. But Father Andy Davey is now in Stockbridge. And this, this photo was taken about 20 years ago. So that gives you an idea of how long ago that was. Well, in our readings this weekend, we hear this theme of the shepherd. And Jeremiah, in that first reading, is complaining about the not-so-good shepherds in his day. But then he points forward to this good shepherd who will come, a king who will reign over us, who will reign wisely and well. And of course, that's Jesus, the good shepherd. This image happens to be one of the oldest depictions of Jesus that we have. It was from the third century, and it was found in the tombs of the, tomb, the catacombs of Priscilla in Rome. It's an image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. The gospel today doesn't say explicitly Jesus is the Good Shepherd. Jesus says that in John's gospel. But we do hear Jesus being concerned for his people and saying that they are like sheep without a shepherd which implies that, of course, Jesus is the shepherd. And in that gospel passage, we also hear three qualities about Jesus that make him a very good shepherd for all of us. The first is that he leads his people. The second is that he feeds them. And the third is that he teaches them. So he leads, feeds, and teaches his people. In terms of leading them, we heard at the very beginning of the gospel passage how the disciples had just come back last week. They had been sent out. We heard last week that they were sent out two by two to preach and to anoint the sick, and then they come back. They're tired, and what does Jesus do? He says, it says that he leads them away to a deserted place to pray, to experience some rest and recovery. And we might think, how does Jesus lead us when we're stressed or tired and we need to recharge our spiritual batteries? Well, one way is through a little time of adoration. Jesus leads us to a quiet place to pray and to recharge. Well, Jesus also then feeds his people. And right after this passage, we, hear, we will hear, if you, were to, if you were to keep reading the gospel passage, Jesus will then feed the multitude. All these people are gathered around Jesus it says that he's concerned for them because they don't have anything to eat, and he's going to, in the next section, though we didn't hear it today, he will feed the multitude. He'll feed the 5,000 by multiplying a few loaves and fishes. He'll perform an extraordinary miracle that is a kind of prediction miracle of the Eucharist, how he's going to feed us ultimately through the Eucharist. Well, and finally, the last point is that Jesus teaches his people. And what's so interesting is that at the end of that gospel passage, when Jesus notices that the crowd is hungry, he says, it says that they were like sheep without a shepherd. And what does Jesus do? Feed them right away? No, he doesn't feed them right away. It says he began to teach them many things. And then he feeds them. And that reveals to us something that's perhaps a little surprising. You know, so many of us are, are just 
so concentrated on what we're going to eat for our next meal, right? And Jesus is saying, there's something more important here. Our faith, coming to know Jesus. You know, our food helps us to survive day by day for a time, but the spiritual food that we receive helps us for all eternity. So in a certain sense, we can say that Jesus teaching his flock, his children, teaching all of us, the fact that we're here this morning at Mass means that we're doing something that's more important even than eating. And that's pretty cool that we're here. We're being fed by our Lord right here, right now in this place. Well, there's a particular way in which Jesus feeds well, leads, feeds, and teaches his people right now in this time also, and it's through the Eucharistic Congress that's going on in Indianapolis. Here's a photo of the Congress that was sent to us by Father Matt. He's there, and uh, this was a, a, a scene there that uh, was a, a, the, how all the people are gathered there in the stadium. And uh, Fox News reported that there are 55,000 people present for the Eucharistic Congress. And this is the first time a Eucharistic Congress has happened in our country since, well, I think 83 years ago, whenever that was, 83 years ago. So this is history happening right now. It's pretty awesome. Here are some other scenes from the Eucharistic Congress that give us a perspective of just the number of people. And Jesus is leading, feeding, and teaching his people through the Congress because there are great speakers there who teach the people, such as Bishop Barron, Father Mike Schmitz, uh, Jonathan Rumi, also from The Chosen, uh, they all give talks. And, uh, of course, then there's the feeding of the people, too, through the holy sacrifice of the Mass. That's the, the central focus of the whole experience there at the Eucharistic Congress. It's a beautiful thing. Parishioner Megan Zaleski, who we've shown as she's been, you know, one of our pilgrims, so we've shown her the last several weeks, uh, you know, walking on pilgrimage, well, here she is now having arrived at the stadium. She was given the image of Our Lady with the Eucharist to carry into the stadium. What a beautiful moment. And there was also a sighting of Father Matt. So here he is with Scott and Father Flat Matt. <laughs> so we, we pray and hope that Father Matt and, and the parishioners from St. Patrick's uh, are having a wonderful time there at the Congress. Well, what does this mean for all of us then? Because certainly we talk today about Jesus as our good shepherd, but Jesus isn't the only shepherd, right? We are called now to carry the torch, as it were, to become shepherds for others. And so we might think about how is it that we take on our responsibility of shepherding the people entrusted to our care? You know, today after the Mass, we're going to have a baptism. And I see some of the families who are here today with their little ones. And we're so grateful that you're here. But you're doing a marvelous thing in leading, feeding, and teaching your children, especially in the faith. And baptism is the start of that. So what an exciting thing that you are here fulfilling your role as shepherds for your children by bringing them to the church to be baptized, to receive God's divine life within them. How else might we then carry that torch and, and be good shepherds for the people around us. Well, you've probably heard of Blessed Carlo Acutis. Blessed Carlo uh, died at the age of 16 and is going to be canonized soon. It was announced just a few weeks ago that his canonization has been approved and it will probably happen sometime in 2025. But Blessed Carlo, in his young life, loved the Eucharist and he created a website with documentation of, of 105 different Eucharistic miracles that have happened throughout the centuries. And so if you're able to um, go to his website, uh, or we'll try to put the website online for you, um, hopefully, hopefully soon on our newsletter so that you can tune in to, to that newsletter. Well, uh, then what about, what other things can we do to help spread the faith and to bring people to Jesus? How can we be good shepherds to them? Well, all it takes sometimes is just inviting them to come to Mass. Sometimes we get afraid because we think we have to have 
big explanations and long arguments and things like that. Sometimes it just takes a simple invitation. I recently told the story of my college roommate who, when I wasn't going to church, he said to me, would you like to go to Mass with me? And I said, well, okay, why not? And that started me on the road, coming back into the faith. I also had a friend who lived in Colorado who wasn't really into her faith too much, but someone invited her to go to Eucharistic Adoration. And, uh, and she didn't even really know what it was, but she went anyway. They said, oh, we're having it from nine to five. And she didn't know that you're, typically people spend only about an hour. But so she went from nine to five. <laughs> but as she was there in the chapel and looking at our Lord in the, in the Eucharist, tears just started to flow and she didn't know why. And after a while, she just felt kind of this thought to, to, or idea to go to the, the back of the chapel and she went back there and she found a pamphlet that explained uh, the, about the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And then her jaw opened wide and she realized that the, the Eucharist that she was gazing at was really Jesus. And she said to her husband, that's Jesus. That's really Jesus. He's right here. And then the tears really started to flow. And from that day on, she developed a deep, deep love for our Lord in the Eucharist and started going to daily Mass and then frequent adoration. How is the Lord leading us? How is He feeding us? How is He teaching us? Maybe we want to read more about the Eucharist. Maybe we want to tune in to some of the talks that are on the EWTN website at the Eucharistic Congress. How is it that the Lord is inviting us to go just a little bit deeper today in our faith so that we then can become those good shepherds for others? Because Jesus gave himself to us. He gave us the Eucharist so that he could be with us, body, blood, soul, and divinity, so that we could take him into ourself and have his divine life within us. This mattered so much to Jesus that he gave his life for us. How much then does it matter for us that we too, like him, can be good shepherds to the people that he sends us?